Hi, everybody. So, as you know, we haven't done a lot of reviews yet, so I kind of feel a little bit saddened that I haven't done a review yet. So, why don't we look at some Workaday Petchy from the friends at Fuel 3D, which gave me this roll at Murph. So, why don't we open it up? We'll have a look at it and see what we think of it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to CMP. My name is Ron. Once again, we're back in the studio, and I haven't gone over to the printers yet, but once I go to the printers, we'll do some testing, and I'll be talking from there. So the audio might sound a little different, so just beware. So when I was at Murph this year, I was given a roll of Fuel 3D Pet G Workaday brand. This is meant for you to you know, work on projects that you will be working on constantly and you know, be able to produce some stuff. Now, according to Fuel 3D, their brand is listed as this. Workaday Pet G is industrial strength filament with several with several great features. It combines easy to use a PLA filament with the strength and durability of ABS. Well, those are two good points to put in there. It uses material that is FDA approved for food containing containers and tools used for food consumption. So, if you need like a um, food safe type pet G, this is, says it's food safe. So I guess it doesn't have any of the chemicals that you would find in like water bottles or anything like that. So it says superpower and it says best suited for applications where optical clarity, impact toughness, temperature resistance are needed. Works very well with mechanical parts and snap it in enclosures. So it says it's good on PEI, build tech, blue painter's tape. So this should be okay on my mirror. And it says easy to use. They give it in the middle. Print speed, they say 30 to 80. So we'll have to adjust our uh, settings on there. This is the one that kind of kills me. 240 to 260 is the temperature that prints at. So that means I'm going to have to really push the nozzle. Mm, fun. Heated bed, 70 to 85. So we'll go at 70. Yeah. So we're going to have to try this out, see how it works. And uh, I got three items. As usual, we'll print a Benchy. We'll also print a vase. And I'll figure out something else we got to print. And then we'll uh, run through the print gauntlet and uh, see how it performs. So let's cut down to the printer and uh, we'll go down to the printer. We'll see how the parts look and uh, we'll go from there. So while we have this printing, and I'm just showing you guys a little clip, I want to talk a little bit about the box itself. Now, I do have some questions about it. Now, spools wrapped up nicely. Everything else is perfect. But I ran into kind of a little odd thing here. If you notice, this box has a little cutout here. So it's not an actual box that you can store your filament in. So you got to leave it in a bag and store it, you know, in a plastic bag with your silica cell in it. And it does come with a silica package, the whole nine yards, but usually I throw in one of my little printed ones. But I don't have on my desk right now, though, or else I would show it to you. But, you know, since that's cut out, I guess it's easy to fold, but all the printing information is on the back. So maybe a little card in the box bag would have been a great idea, you know, just to have inside here so you can put it on your, so it's on a sticker or something on the back or on the front of the roll. Other than that, the stuff has been printing good, as you can see right now. It's coming out very good. Now, I want to explain a few things I had to do. Because I have an inductor sensor, I actually had to adjust the height. Because, as we know, it doesn't like squish. So, my squish was at set at 1.25. So, I actually increased it to 2. So, hopefully, that's enough squish on there that will allow it to print nicely. But, you know, once all the printing is done, we'll come back and I'll show you all the prints. But I just wanted to give you guys an update on that. And want to talk a little bit about the box. Because... You know, with that slot there, kind of makes it hard for, you know, to put it back away in the box. But because I keep all my stuff in a dry box, it's not so bad. And I don't like to leave reels open, you know, that type of thing. But, yeah, I just thought I wouldn't want I just wanted to tap on that first of all. But anyways, guys, I'll let you get back to I'll get back to printing some more. And uh, once everything's printed, we'll come back and we'll talk about it.
Hi everybody, welcome back to the show. As you can see, different t-shirt. I had some issues getting some prints done, but we got them finally finished, and I'm going to talk about them. These prints turned out wonderful. So you're going to see a flexi item that I printed, you're going to see a benchy, and you're going to see a vase. Now, the flexi one that I did print is supposed to be a turtle. Yeah, I know, it doesn't look like a turtle, but that's what it's supposed to be. So right now, why don't we get into the print of the turtle? Now, the turtle print turned out really well. I'm actually really impressed at there's no stringing. It formed beautifully. This is at 5% infill. Now, as you see here, as I'm holding one, listen to this. The turtle is a little squeaky. Granted, it came out a little squeaky. I'm just thinking it's just the plastic itself made it that squeaky, but uh, it could be in some settings I had a little off. It was printed at 240 Celsius with a bed at 70 with a 2.4 layer height. And honestly, it turned out really nicely. I like the look of it. I like how, how it got a nice little shine to it. It's a nice little print. Uh, like I said, squeaky side to side. It's not a bad print. Now let's talk about the Benchy. Because the Benchy shows a lot of nice little things with this. The Benchy itself turned out marvelous. The quality of this was uh, fabulous. Now... Same settings I used for the squeaky turtle, as I'll call it, I used on the Benchy, and the Benchy turned out wonderful. There's only one little problem, though. On this side of the Benchy, right here, I was seeing a little bit of ghosting on this side. Didn't show up on the other side. Only showed up on this side. Which led me going, well, why did that happen? I'm not sure. Uh, it could have been a just an artifact that happened that could have been a possibility also I noticed on the bow right here or is that the stern I can't remember my boating terms I do apologize but on the front of the benchy here the layer lines are a little bit more pronounced you can see them clearly as a bell and in different areas of the lines going up the color kind of shifted a little bit now I don't know if that's just because the way it printed or there was an issue that I wasn't aware of. I have no idea, but all in all, no stringing. Which is the best part about this whole thing is that there's no string. Now comes the third part. The vase. The vase turned out wonderful. Just a correction to let you know that I did increase the heat on this one. Instead of it being printed at 240, I went with 245 on this one. Also, I ran into a couple problems with the vase. I print, ended up printing a lot of hard item versions of the vase. Keynote, if you're using Cura, make sure you turn spiral on. That is what makes the vase a vase. This print turned out wonderful. Even on the high overhangs at the top, came out perfect. This vase has a lot of nice little textures to it that, you know, you can feel for. Layer lines were a little less pronounced on this than they were on the Benchy. And I know the Benchy is meant to do that. Inside the vase, there was a little bit of stringing on one of the edges. But it was, but unless you're looking for it inside the vase, you won't notice it. This stuff prints like PLA in a lot of ways, which makes me happy because... Let's face it, we know it will straight. My final thoughts on the uh, Fuel 3D Pet G. One of my favorite Pet G items. I have not printed it. I printed Pet G with a couple other ones, and they just come out stringy as heck. I'll admit it. My prints always come out stringy. They always have a little bit of strings. Nothing that a little heat gun can't fix, but I don't want to be doing that every time. This stuff prints like PLA. I swear, this stuff is amazing. 
Now, would I recommend it to the average user? Not really. Keep in mind that you're heating your nozzle at a high heat. And if you're not running like stuff like Capricorn like I was, I would not recommend it. I would say an all-metal hot end is a better way to go. Like, don't get me wrong, I have an all-metal hot end on my CR-10. I have not tested this with the CR-10. I only did this on the Ender-3. The Ender-3 is a really good workhorse, but at the temperatures that you're asking for, you can cause a little bit of health issues. On Capricorn's website, which I'll have a link to at the bottom, we'll link up to what Capricorn heat, what the heat does to this tubing, so you guys got an understanding of why I, use, why I would use it and uh, with the hot end I have, which is an original hot end, not a all-metal hot end. If I was to reprint this again, I would recommend getting an all-metal hot end for this one. With that being said, I still think this is a very good filament. So if you like what we're doing here, I know something I haven't done in a little while, and I've had this roll kicking around for a little bit, so I do apologize about that, but I wanted to bring out another filament review and I know you guys have been asking me to do another one, which is coming soon. Uh, I do want to apologize with the delays that these have all been coming out. As of right now, I am looking for work um, in a field of anything, really. And right now, it's more really concentrating on getting those resumes out than I have been able to concentrate on the videos. So I do apologize that the videos haven't been coming out like regularly. But right now... I need to find work, and work is more important because that pays the bills right now. Now, if you want to help the channel out, including myself, I do have the way that you can support us by Streamlabs. You can also support us on Patreon. We have a Patreon page set up. I don't advertise a lot, not because I don't really give a get, you know, that I worry about Patreon. It's just I have it. But I just haven't been putting it out because I haven't had any way to promote it. So this is my way to promote it now. If you want to click at the bottom where it says support us, those are the options you have available. If there's other ways that you want me to, to add, I will add them if that becomes an issue. Also, please like, subscribe. Also, spread the word around. Let other people know about this channel. I mean, sure, yeah, I'm Canadian, 100%. I'll no knock on it. But I want people to understand that I look at it in a perspective outside of the U.S. Most of the viewers on this channel are from the U.S., and I understand that. But I want to give you guys a uh, U.S. view on the other side of the country, you know, the Great White North, what we do out here. Costs of equipment and supplies and everything else are more expensive for me to afford because I live in Canada. U.S. dominates our Canadian dollar. If our Canadian dollar, is, they hammer our Canadian dollar low because we are mostly an exporter. We're not that much of an importer. So equipment, shipping, buying stuff, it all comes up to adding a lot of money, which I don't mind spending. But when you have you have more money going out than you have coming in, it kind of hurts the channel. So, you know, if you guys can help us out, you know, if we were at a thousand, I'd still be asking for your help, but it would be a little bit easier because sometimes YouTube will chip in some money. But if you guys want to help us out, you know, I'll not look it down. If you guys want to, you know, send something to the channel, anything like that, just let me know. You know, our email is always open and I'm willing to, you know, help willing to talk to you guys so you know until next time guys i want to thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions comments or concerns you know leave them down below in the comment section i do read them and i do reply till next time everybody thank you so much for watching have yourselves a great day